Welcome. Welcome on behalf of, of Associated Church located in Owatonna, Minnesota, and from Pilgrim Congregational United Church of Christ from here in Duluth. While physically distanced as faith communities of mission and ministry, we are united in spirit and truth, held by the one in whom we live and move and have our being. Let us take a moment to call to mind all those in our fellowships whom we cherish, and remember their faces with love. My name is Jackie Falk. I am a member of Pilgrim, and I serve as chaplain at the St. Louis County Jail. I am grateful to lead worship this morning while Pastor Coquie and Pastor Judith are on vacation. Thank you to Sharon Partridge, uh, who is our worship leader, and to all who are such a blessing, working as a team to make our online worship possible. I hope you have had a heartfelt celebration of the 4th of July. It is the first weekend of the month, so we celebrate communion. If you haven't yet, please take these next few minutes to get your bread and your wine so you could share at our virtual table. And in this time of disconnection, I would like to invite you to bring one extra set of elements, one extra set of bread and wine to your communion table. Place it there to honor someone whom, with whom you, find, whom you find difficult to welcome. Remembering that Jesus, on the night he shared his last meal, included Judas without hesitation. Thank you for preparing your hearts and elements for this sacrament. Let us be called to worship. All creation give thanks to the Lord. Faithful ones, bless the Lord. Speak of the glory of the kingdom of God, proclaim God's power, and remember the faithfulness of the Lord. For God upholds the weary and lifts up the weak. The Lord is just and kind and is near to all who call out in truth. We are the handiwork of God and we will forever bless the Lord.
please join me in the prayer of confession. You are faithful, Creator God. You have made every star in the universe and each cell in our bodies. You know our thoughts and you know our sins. We desperately try to hide our mistakes, our weaknesses, our embarrassments, but you know it all. And so we come before you now asking for your forgiveness, even as we know and you know the limits of our human capabilities. We know the unlimited power of your love. Forgive us, cleanse us, make us whole. Let us pray in silence. The God who has made us will never desert us. The God of creation is creating still, making us new. The God whose love gave us the gift of Jesus Christ is the same God whose love forgives and sustains us. Thanks be to God, amen. Let us celebrate God's presence with us across time and space by sharing signs of peace with others at home with us, waving to our neighbors or shouting peace out our doors. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you. Peace. Good morning. Gosh, I wish I could see you, but thanks for coming and welcome. I want to talk to you this morning about some of the things we see people around us doing because of the virus that is happening in our country. You know, sometimes you might feel some fear or some anxiousness about it. If you do, tell an adult. They will want to help you take care of those feelings. And at the same time, your parents and all the adults are working to keep you safe and healthy. Until we have medicines to take care of the coronavirus, there are some important things we can do to keep healthy and help everyone around us keep healthy too. And I bet you know what they are, right? You wash your hands for 20 seconds, lots of times a day. And you stay six feet apart, which always seems really far, doesn't it? No whispering. And you wear a mask. When we follow Jesus, we promise to love our neighbor. Now, when Jesus was talking about loving our neighbor, he meant warm feelings and affection like we feel for family and friends. But Jesus was also talking about doing actions that make other people's lives better. Washing your hands, staying six feet apart, those all make our neighbor's lives better by helping to keep them safe from the virus. And wearing a mask is one more important thing we can do. I am wearing mine, this mask, and here we have a whole bunch of them. You and your families may have some and may be wearing them too. Have you had a chance to wear one? My face and nose feel kind of funny when I wear mine. Sometimes my glasses fog up. Not my favorite thing, but I wear my mask anyway. Our scientists and doctors tell us when we, wear, when we breathe, we spray out tiny droplets called aerosols that float into the air for others to breathe. If others breathe those aerosols and we're sick, they might catch the flu. Without a mask, we breathe out an aerosol cloud that can expand to... Denny's going to help me. So how much for just a little bit of time? Right away. Three feet with just that first breath. Five seconds. Oh, look how far it goes in five seconds, all the way over there, pretty soon. 30 seconds, 19, 
And if we wait 30 seconds, that aerosol cloud is still flying out there. But if we wear a mask, it goes sideways. It goes a little bit sideways. And our neighbor is safe from the aerosol. When we wear a mask, we are loving our neighbor. So I wear my mask. And I hope I see you soon wearing your mask, too. Would you please say a prayer with me? Dear Jesus, you want us to love our neighbor. We know our breath can spread the virus around. Help us to remember to wear a mask so that we can keep our neighbor safe. Let us breathe and we will feel our connection to the whole human family. And we give you thanks for our breath and that we can keep our neighbors safe too. Amen. Our scripture reading is from the Gospels, Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you, and you did not dance. We wailed, and you did not mourn. For John came, neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came, eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. Then he began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done, because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted in heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom than for you. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle, and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be received by you in love, that something new may become of them. Amen. Breath, breathing, in, out. Have we ever been so aware of our own breath? We become focused on our own breath as we feel the pull of each inhale and the rush of each exhale behind our COVID masks. Have we ever been so alert and attentive to the breathing of others? Is my neighbor wearing a mask or not? If not, do we catch our breath, wondering if their aerosol could possibly reach us? Then the Lord God formed the human being of dust from the ground and breathed his nostri in his nostrils the breath of life, and the human be being became a living creature. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. When we hear these words, I can't breathe, do they take our breath away? When we hear those words, I can't breathe, do we catch our own breath in hopes that we could just capture it 
and share it with another? As a nation, have we ever been so attentive and focused on God's gift of life breath to another? Even more so on this 4th of July weekend, when we listen again to the words that were written to be our nation's DNA, words that were to define our character and to give us compassionate hearts as a people. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men, all human beings are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Life. Life is breath. Breath is spirit. Spirit is life. Life is good. Do we catch our breath when we hear these words? All human beings have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness? Catch our breath because we know these words have never been and are not yet lived reality for everyone? Do we flinch at the pain of knowing in our hearts that these words are still only aspiration and not daily reality? So painful to hear these words again while our societal systems have rolled on unchanged while black men died and the lives of people of color are more exposed and vulnerable to the ravages of the pandemic. Jefferson's words will convict us for failing to realize them this year and every year until we do so. If we catch our breath, if we flinch in pain when we see the devastating consequences of systemic racism around us, I believe the Jesus we meet in today's text from Matthew would agree. Jesus would catch his breath and call us out for our blindness to African heritage children failing in school year after year, and to people of color denied a reliable sense of safety walking the streets of our communities. Reverend David Losey, Lutheran pastor and theologian, invites us into the deep currents under this morning's scripture from Matthew. Jesus is calling out the all too human persistent failure to see God. Like foolish children who can never be satisfied, we don't see God unless God comes to us in the manner and image we prescribe. Take our religious leaders. We don't want them if they're too severe, like John the Baptist. Nor, and we don't want them if they're too accepting, like Jesus. No, no, we want them to be pretty much just right, pretty much just right, pretty much just like us. Or maybe God's actions. We want deeds of power and healing to change our communities, but we don't want those changes to demand anything uncomfortable or difficult or new to us. Jesus offered such deeds of power to his own Jew Jewish communities. Chorazin, Bethsaida, Capernaum, communities whose Jewish religious legal authorities lived on the backs of people suffering on the margins. Authorities who had built self-protective accommodations with the oppressive Roman Empire. Well, they couldn't give up their special privileges. And in contrast, Jesus called out blessing on the Phoenician cities, Tyre and Sidon, who though Gentiles, formed no such accommodations with the Romans and remained open to receiving the power of new life Jesus offered. So, in these days of pandemic and Black Lives Matter, I keep losing my breath. I'm anxious. I have to catch my breath only to lose it and catch it again. I am profoundly uncomfortable. But why shouldn't I be? I am the mother of two sons, white sons. I have never known the discomfort of fearing that the police would mistreat my sons because of the color of their skin. What am I to do in this time of my discomfort with this pain? Jesus answers, come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I will give you breath. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Will we recognize our God meeting us here in the pandemic? Will we choose a path of love and repentance when God offers it to us? Jesus tells us God is the one who comes alongside us. God is the one who bears our burdens, who yokes us to lead us, like the trained ox is yoked to the new ox, that the new ox might learn the way. God is the one who shows up in our need. It is not necessarily what we want. We often would prefer a God who takes away our problems rather than helps us cope with them, who eliminates challenges rather than equips us for them, and who vanquishes our opponents rather than enabling us to make peace with them. Perhaps what we need is a reminder that God always show up, shows up where we least expect God to be, in the need of our neighbor, in the person that doesn't look like us, in the person who believes and thinks and acts differently than we do, and just as importantly, differently than we think they should. In, that, in all these circumstances, our call is the same, to meet our neighbors where they are, accept them as we are able. It may not be easy work, but it is life-giving, inspiring, and joyful. So I share now with you the words of my colleague, Reverend Richard Coleman. He is currently a pastor at Wayman AME Church in North Minneapolis, where he serves with his wife, Reverend Mary Coleman. Several years ago here, they served at St. Mark AME. He was a powerful force for change then and continues to be, especially now. While he was here in Duluth, he helped shape the Living into the Difficult Conference held at Peace Church to explore the work of reparations here with the African heritage community in Duluth. The work of reparation he spoke of back then is even needed more now. Let us listen to the words of our neighbor in a spirit of repentance and action to explore what we must do now. The murder of Mr. George Floyd in broad daylight by peace officers revealed what people of color, particularly African-Americans, have known before the inception of the United States of America. Its builders were men of European heritage who envisioned a nation for themselves and their offspring. The well-being of our indigenous mothers and fathers and African ancestors was less than tangential. America was built for whites on the land of native people and by the hands of God's sun-kissed children, my ancestors, who survived the middle passage that took millions of lives. African families were torn apart and mercilessly enslaved to nurture white babies and to ensure that white families could be intact and thrive through slave labor. We grieve daily, but oceans of tears are not enough. The event has raised our consciousness to what the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke of as the fierce urgency of now. Collective action fostered by repentance, awakening and awareness must be taken. Listening to the oppressed is essential. Before God called Moses to go to air Pharaoh, he listened, he heard his people's cries. Please hear this and let the Holy Spirit speak. Satan handed the anti-Christian ideology of white supremacy to men who sought to secure themselves. That work by the Prince of Darkness has contaminated the soil from which we eat, the water we drink, and the air we breathe but it has produced great wealth for whites and today america is the world's leader according to material measures so the notion of making america great again really resonates with over 100 million american whites mr floyd and countless other blacks have been lynched publicly humiliated and savagely killed to maintain law and order 
Every now and then, those who are sworn to keep the peace make themselves, make examples of blacks, especially black men, to ensure we stay in our places so the American machine can continue to roll. It has been rolling, rolling over people of color. But our loving God is communicating his heart and mercifully inviting us to repent and change. We can feel God's lament and anger as we view the utterly obscene destruction of Mr. Floyd's life. We should all be devastated by what we've witnessed, but even more by what it represents. Witnessing the knee of oppression driving the breath from our brother by an officer of the peace and his accomplices force us to face the fact that our society has allowed oppression so long that whites feel they get killed with impunity. Yes, we're all witnesses, and we must all testify. As followers of Jesus Christ, it's our responsibility to be light and salt. Eternal truth will speak for or against us in the divine court of justice. What will be said of us? Will we repent? Will we have repented? Will we acknowledge that we as individuals and as a nation have broken the great commandments to love God and God's human creation, or will we let the machine roll on? It's still rolling. And a great number of people, even those whose hearts were broken last week, are already saying, let's move on. Will we be the people who say no? No to the culture that kills people. Will we be those who head upstream and face the anti-Christian structural iniquities that perpetuate injustice, clear the river, and let justice roll on like a river and righteousness like a never-failing stream? May God bless us all and have mercy on us and our nation. And so, Having heard Reverend Coleman's words, may we rest in God's loving presence that we might understand them. May it be so for you and for me and for all those God loves. Even in these times of difficulty, we are given much. And that gift becomes the most, most powerful to us when we also give it away. So in many different amounts and ways, when gathered up by you, our gifts become a food pantry, a rebuilt life, medicine for children, a caregiver to the lonely. It is your grace in action, loving our neighbor. In love, we offer these gifts in the name of Jesus.
We come to the Lord's table that we might share in communion. And here as we arrive, let us pray. And we'll take the instruction of Paul, who says, when we do not know how to pray for ourselves, we let the Spirit pray within us with sighs too deep for words. And we seal that prayer with the words Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning you were invited to, for Holy Communion in the body of Christ. That body of Christ is not the loaf of bread you see here on your screen. The body of Christ is not even the bread on your table at home. The body of Christ is us, as we are strengthened by sharing together this meal of hope, and grace and presence. The parables on the table this morning include masks and gloves, symbols of the care of the body of Christ. As Jesus might have said, the realm of God is like a mask of compassion on the bread of heaven, and the gloved hand lifting the cup of blessing so that all may be served in, in safety. We pause to honor the tender memory, the holy table in our church home, and to consecrate with, consecrate with love all God's children at those many holy tables in many home churches. Hear the blessing. Gentle host, rest upon us as you rest upon water and light, earth and creatures, human beings, all in your image, and on the holy Sabbath when you gave them breath. Send your spirit of life and love, power and blessing upon your children who are staying at home so that this bread may be broken and partnered in love and this cup may be poured out in hope for all. So on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. He blessed it. He broke it. And he said, take and eat. For this is my body, broken for you, that you might have new life. In your home, take your bread and eat the bread of new life. And in like manner, Jesus took the cup, poured out the wine into it, giving it freely, saying, this is, the, the, this is my blood given in the new covenant for you. Take and drink. And likewise, at home, drink from the cup of blessing. Let us pray. Risen Christ, live in us that we may live in you. Breathe in us that we may breathe in you. Always. Amen.
we part from one another. Take this blessing with you. May God's spirit surround you and those whom you love. Rest now in that calm embrace. Let your hearts be warmed and all storms be stilled by the whisper of love's voice. May it be so.